there are things going on in the house. In my house, there are voices inside the walls. Why bring Exorcist to life on TV? There's no good reason to bring uh, Exorcist to live on TV. <laughs> so you get over that moment, too, where they're like, we have a big piece of uh, intellectual property. Do something with it. And you're like, uh, and then you take a deep breath and you're like, okay, first off, how can you honor it? How can you, um, uh, and the best way to honor it is try to do something aggressively new um, without, uh, you know, being trashy about it. Um, and I think, you know, there's a couple, Friday Night Lights and Fargo, there's a, a couple of shows that have attempted to become a good television show after they were already a great novel or a great, and so it's intimidating there, um, but I, I will never be able to say why. It's just like, <laughs> you're doing it, so try not to offend and actually try, see if you can do something to, um, to add to it a little bit, to try to, you know, evolve this little, this little story and see if there is something new in this moment in time that you can make it this genre and this idea fresh again. Definitely. I mean, especially with the storyline and, and everybody being scared in the 70s. Uh, how did you come about to bring Sharon Gliss on, on the project? Yeah, lucky. I mean, are you kidding? I mean, I mean, you, why, you want to talk about She's just weird enough. <laughs> right? Just sick enough. Right, yeah. I mean, right. I don't know how it comes. Like, somebody says, hey, this role's coming to you. By an, icon right. an iconic movie, an iconic thing. And I don't know. What do you... I was in, I think... Saks Fifth Avenue, helping uh, my niece get dressed for her 50th birthday. Which Saks? In what, in what? Beverly Hills. Oh, okay. My brother used to, my, uh, my brother Larry used to be the manager of that store, and now he's in New York. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, so that's where I was. I was helping her, you know, in that special room where they uh -huh. do all the... The fancy room, Sharon. The fancy, the fancy room. room. That's all right. The fancy room. And they were, we were just dressing my niece. Uh -huh. And I got these calls, but Saks, the reception isn't really good. So <laughs> anyway, there, there were calls from many people, and then I... Uh, Wait, the abortionist? Of, I don't want to be I, in a <laughs> show called The Abortionist. No, 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 no. <laughs> and, and that's how I found out, so I went out of the store so I could get the reception and was thrilled. Oh, right. I and said, it, yes. And it's, it's become an iconic uh, sh film, and then also with Ellen Burstyn playing Chris Regan, and you're playing Chris. Um, do you feel like you're going to make this your own uh, um, just own character in itself, or, or you did you have like an homage to Ellen or anything like that? Or I didn't. I, I wouldn't ever attempt to try and imitate Ellen Burstyn. She's just fabulous. I just did my own Chris McNeil. Um, but we don't look dissimilar, actually, Ellen and I. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Um, but I did my own. First of all, it's like 40 years later, right. and everybody changes. The situation is different. The story is very, very different. I mean, what she's gone through in 40 years and then appears again, it's a, it's a different character. And what do you see is the magic of The Exorcist that people will gravitate to it? And especially uh, now that it's a TV show and, you know, you worked on Friday Night Lights, created something good with that, and now The Exorcist, hopefully, that becomes something that everybody's going to love. Oh, boy. Well, I think The Exorcist is such an... Is iconic the right word? Piece? Sure, yeah. Such an iconic piece. And I think it's in the right hands. It could have, you know... You take something like that and try and bring it to another medium. It could be oops. This man is a genius. Everything he touches turns to gold. How about we talk about Jeremy Slater, too, who created this thing? I'm just a dumb TV hack that kind of makes things sort of like kind of, kind of Hi, work. Hi, Jeremy. Too. You're right. <laughs> um, You're right. Uh, why is it? I mean, it's, uh, I think the success of that movie and why it kind of continues to like haunt people is that it's just so steeped in something real. It's something that seems like these are lived-in lives, and it could be happening next door to you. And that is, and there's something mm -hmm. primal and chilling about that. Um, and uh, I, I think that's, I think that's why it is. I think it's also something was really uh, executed really, really well a long time ago, and yeah, generations pass it down and pass it down. And it stands the test of time, and you got a really big obstacle to try to kind of uh, hurdle over. Um, yeah. And, uh, Sharon, did you watch the movie when it was first run in the movie theaters? The or movie? Yeah. I did. It was in the 70s, correct? Right. And right behind me was an entire row of Catholic priests with the collar on. <laughs> the entire row. And I was raised in Hollywood. I was born in the city. Um, I'd never seen Catholic priests ever in a theater. <laughs> Whole row of them. And all of a sudden I got nervous. I thought, whoa. 
So I turned and I said, hi, Father, are you going to keep us protected? Because I was raised Catholic. And, um, and they said, we don't know. But obviously that movie meant a great deal to them, you know, for them to come. And then when I was offered this job, I ran it again. And I'm glad I did, because I, I needed to be reminded of certain things. And it holds up. Yeah. It holds up very well. Wow. And, That's and, a good movie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's a good series, too. And my name is not over the title, so I can say that. <laughs> well, you know, we're looking at the, we're looking here at the, the poster. It says, "Every soul is a battlefield." Do you believe every soul is a battlefield? <laughs> yes. Even, Why do you believe? Even Donald Trump's? No, 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 especially, no, no. <laughs> especially. Um, I think it's a brilliant line. I just, I just. She was talking about. I just it right said to Roland, yeah. I said, Roland, can you get me a T-shirt with that on it? So I, some love for the marketing department, y'all. Yeah, way to go! Yeah, yes, it's wonderful. Um, yeah, I do think every soul is a battlefield, their own personal battle. And then lastly, and hopefully we all win. Yeah. yeah, we need to win, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, you know, this is like a paranormal situation or whatnot. Have you guys ever had paranormal activity in your life, or even starting to experience that on the set or anything? Like that? Already, I've already found my talking point. Here's what's happened since I started. Uh, working on this show. I got double pneumonia. I broke my foot. I got an ulcer. Uh, just uh, just in the first first season of this show. It is totally real. The Exorcist Cursed is out there and it will infect anybody who uh, who comes near. And I'm touching you now. You're going to get it yourself, my friends. Yeah. I've experienced paranorm paranorm paranormal activity. Um, not of this sort, but I had a friend who died who kept coming back and haunting and being mischievous. In yeah. what form? Wait, let's not, let's not cut roll here. Let's, let's learn a little bit. What, where, well, I, I had rented my apartment in Toronto to an actor. And um, my friend had died, my driver, mm -hmm. on, on the show I was working on. And he kept knocking on the door. And my actor, tenant, would go and answer, there's nobody there. Well, then finally it got so crazy, he'd just stand there and wait for the knock and throw it open. Nothing there. There's nobody there, no. Oh, and I and I had to go phone. over and talk so him disturbing. into not leaving. I said, it's just Al, my driver. <laughs> He's just being mischievous. <laughs> but stuff would move. Wow. Uh, but people do have, I mean, you know, it's energy. Mm -hmm. The body's gone, but the energy uh, is... Very strong. You're, you're creeping everybody out now, Sharon. I'm sorry. It's out. okay. I like that stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, why do you think people should come and see how the exercise term transform on the series? Um, this is what I'll say. Um, uh, the the cast, uh, the cinematography, um, are two things you will not see on network television. They're of a completely different order. Eh, the writing's all right, but it is not. This is, a, this is the best cast on network television. And a lot of faces that you haven't seen are day players of this amazing group of Chicago theater actors. Mm. And uh, it's, uh, they're pretty badass. So mostly you just get out of the way and let actors do <laughs> what they want to do. You know? That's why I would see it, for the acting. All right. any, word, any last words, Sharon? I'm just lucky, I'm very fortunate to be part of the ride. Thank you. No, thank you. Enjoy it. Thanks, so. yeah. You're being manipulated by forces you can't even begin to understand. Anybody up there?